Hello, this is GeoTechLand, and today I'm going to be taking a look at GNOME 41, which is set to be released tomorrow on September 22nd. I'm mostly going to be focused on the biggest update here, and that is the new GNOME Software Center. I'm running this version of GNOME via GNOME OS Nightly, so I'm running this virtualized through GNOME boxes here. Just briefly, there's been, you know, all kinds of updates in this newer version of GNOME, you know, performance updates. Some apps have gotten updates like the GNOME Maps app. I'll leave a link to an article in the description below so you can see or read about more of the changes. Without further ado, here is the new GNOME Software Center. And off the bat, I must say that it looks very nice. It just feels that it's very complete. And so there's been several iterations of this GNOME Software Center. And even though it wasn't terrible before, I felt like it was a decent software center. But now with this latest update, now it feels like a very premium uh, software store. I think it's on the level now of, you know, the App Store or even the Google Play Store with these latest changes. Here you see a sort of a editor's choice of apps. And I think that's, that's a good idea, you know. I think it's it could be the job of the OS or the distro to kind of recommend some apps, but then also have a different section like new and updated and even these nice looking tabs or buttons here where you can click on more apps. And so let's take a look first at Bitwarden, which is a nice password manager, just so we can get an idea of how the apps look here. And you can see the source is Flathub via or Flatpak via Flathub. And I really like this. Um, I, I don't know if they had this the previous version. I think they might have borrowed this from the elementary slash pop OS app center. Because they have this little source here in the top here, which I think is very good. And then if you scroll down, you see some of these latest uh, entries here. So it'll give you a download size and then it'll gauge or tell you a little bit about the privacy you can expect. One thing I've noticed is that most apps have some warning of some kind because these apps will access, you know, sort of personal folders like this one needs download folder, read, write access, can read and write all data in your downloads history. So I guess when choosing the apps, you got to trust the, you know, the developer. And I guess in this case, in particular, the code is auditable. I'm sure that gives users a bit more reassurance. And one cool thing here is that it also tells you the license. So in this case, GPL 3.0 tells you the source, Flatpak via Flathub, and also the SDK, which is interesting because this tells you that it's built using the free desktop platform. And then it gives you a nice helpful link to actually add missing information, which is very nice. And then here, this is interesting because GNOME has always been especially with the most recent version of like GNOME 3 and GNOME 40. GNOME's always been built to be more mobile tablet friendly in preparation for like the future. And this is very helpful because this will tell you if it's desktop only or if it supports other platforms like mobile, which is gonna be important for, you know, operating systems like Flash, which you can see like with the Librem 5. And it also lets you know if it's touchscreen compatible, mouse, keyboard, so this is all very useful information and again, preparing for the future. There's also an age rating and it kind of has some interesting uh, content warnings, I guess, that it so far this has no gambling of any kind, etc, etc. But it's a very uh, detailed list here, lots of options. And then you can check the version history, which is also very uh, useful, I think. It goes back pretty far, it looks like. One cool thing here too is that it shows you that it's community built, meaning the software is developed by the open or in the open by a community of volunteers and released under the GPL license. You get information about the project's website, port issues on GitHub, and a help um, that directs you to their website. There's also a reviews uh, menu here, and this has always been there before, but Seems like it's gotten a, a makeover to CS3, which I did install just so I can show you how to write a review, you know, give it a rating. I don't know if it's still in progress, but 
I gave it a rating and hit post, but nothing happened. So I don't know if they're still working on the back end for this, but it didn't add my post. This is another example of a program where it says it's unsafe. So I don't know if something could be, you know, ameliorated here because this gives them access to your home folder. But I wonder if GNOME or flat packs can be set so that they don't access your home folder. That way they give user more privacy. Because otherwise there's going to be a lot of open source apps that are getting marked unsafe and that may kind of give users a not a good experience i would say so let's look at one of these menus here you go to socialize there's the session desktop there's a lot of really uh new and updated apps and i think this is also editor picked because these are pretty mainstream and popular apps here and then they have another other software section yeah, it seems like a very well curated list of apps, a mixture of, you know, standard popular apps and then also popular open source apps. So this is all good. And of course, I love that it looks like most of these or all of these are running through Flathub and Flatpak. So it just makes the experience uh, pretty um, consistent, I would say, rather than being multiple different sources. This is just much better organized. And then here you can see your list of installed apps. If anything needs an update, you can check here as well. Other than that, I'm, that's pretty much it. I mean, I feel like this app store puts it on par with all the other app stores now. And it's just really nice to see if Linux is going to be competitive. It can't just sell itself on privacy and open source. It actually has to offer a really good, nice experience comparable to other distros or other, you know, Mac OS and Windows OSs. I kind of hope that this becomes the standard. I don't know if the right path is for like Pop! OS and Elementary OS to now switch to a GNOME Software Center based store, but that'd be pretty interesting because I feel like now, I mean, I'm pretty sure this took inspiration from the Elementary OS store anyways, but I think it would be interesting if this did become the standard now for Linux because it's a very well designed software center. But let me know your thoughts. What do you think of GNOME 41? And specifically, what do you think of this new software center? Is there anything you like or dislike? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. If you're enjoying my video, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You could also support me on LibraPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero, see links in the description below. If you've been enjoying my latest avatars for Geotechland, even for my Linux gaming channel and my basketball channel, they were made by Bald Paul Nareff. I'll leave links to his Twitter, to his Instagram, and to his YouTube channel. He makes some really cool videos via Blender. Be sure to check him out as well.